everyone, thanks for watching here. This is our Wednesday update of Ian, what it's doing to Florida right now with this historic storm and what it will mean for us here in New Jersey as we go into this weekend and beyond. The eye of Ian continues to move inland here. It is a catastrophic major hurricane that made landfall somewhere between the Fort Myers area just on north to south of Bradenton, Florida. It will continue to move inland into central Florida with time. And then we're expecting to go out into the Atlantic Ocean sometime later this week, Thursday night, and then making landfall again Friday night. Then for us in New Jersey, tidal flooding still likely from Saturday until Tuesday, possibly until Wednesday, and periods of heavy rain from Saturday until Monday. That is new. That is an update. Past couple of days, I was saying Sunday to Tuesday. Now it looks to be more of Saturday to Monday here. So changing your Saturday plans. And this was all par for the course. There are still many changes to be had to this forecast. And there still will be some changes as we get closer and closer to the weekend here. So let's take a look at our tropical tracker right now. It is a Category 4 storm just on the borderline of Category 5, but is a Category 4. Doesn't matter. Still a major hurricane for us. We'll zoom in for you here. And let's show you the radar right now. You can see that eye right there, just west of Captiva, Florida, uh, which is at 1 o'clock p.m. here. But the eye wall, where you see those uh, areas of red and yellow there, that is major hurricane storm force winds and impacts just to the north of there. And that is all with that eye wall that is coming on through. Now, we have a hurricane warning from the Fort Myers area up to St. Petersburg and into the north and east all the way into Orlando and all the way to Daytona Beach, Florida. Now tropical storm warnings going up the coast into Georgia here as we do anticipate that second landfall is a tropical storm later this week. Storm surge warnings continue to be out for pretty much all of the west coast of peninsula of Florida and then from Jacksonville to Charleston expecting again significant storm surge and a storm surge warning is in effect here. So here's a look at a forecast cone, making landfall, and then as a category three, it should be tonight here. Then it moves slowly, seven miles an hour. That is it here. That's a pretty decent jog, not even a real run yet at seven, but we will have that as we go into Thursday morning with maximum sustained wind, 70 miles an hour, borderline hurricane force. That's why those warnings, hurricane warnings are out there. Then it goes offshore Thursday night. Then it tries to curl back in, makes landfall somewhere between Brunswick, Georgia, all the way up into uh, just getting close to Myrtle Beach as we go into Friday here, likely during the afternoon or evening hours. Then it becomes a remnant storm as it goes into the Appalachian Mountains, and then it becomes ours as we go into the weekend here. So here's a look at the storm surge map. This is for the Fort Myers area. I'm showing you the areas with a 90% chance of storm surge being up to nine feet above ground and pointing out some of those areas there. So that's Riverdale High School. Then as we go a little bit further away uh, and closer to Cape Coral, the Cape Coral Hospital, the high school, the Yacht Club and Park Royal Hospital all look to have at least six, seven, eight feet of storm surge with this system here. We'll take you a little further to the north right now, show you what's going on. As we go into uh, Charlotte Regional Medical Center, Twin Isles Country Club, Fawcett Memorial Hospital, all of them, again, looking to see anywhere between six to nine feet of storm surge. Here's a look at our forecast winds. Cape Coral at one o'clock, 110 mile an hour sustained winds. That is a category two storm there. And, and you can think about it this way. It's like a tornado that's maybe 40 or 50 miles up high that's moving in. Strong winds all around this. You see Bradenton trying to get up to 110 as well. But from there, it moves to the north and east. And you still see tropical storm forest winds moving into Georgia and South Carolina as we go later into the week. Rainfall totals are going to be extreme. We have already seen lots of rain so far. This is additional rainfall from the European model. You know, we're talking about 5 to 10 inches of rain for those areas in yellow. That's Port Charlotte, Orlando, Palm Coast, Tampa, just shy of 5 inches of rain. Listen, five inches of rain causes some pretty good issues. And when I say good, I mean significant issues here in New Jersey. And, and it can even do the same in Florida, too. So here is our setup as we turn attention to what's happening here in Jersey. Again, like we've been saying for days, high pressure to the north, low pressure from Ian to the south. That drives an easterly wind. And eventually, that means coastal flooding for us as we go into the weekend. A second high pressure system moves in. How close that high pressure system will be determines how much rain we will see. The closer the high is to us, the drier we will be, and vice versa. 
So looking at our forecast guidance, staying dry as we go into uh, much of uh, the uh, week here. And then Saturday, you start to see some rain coming in. This is Sunday at 1230, Monday at 3 a.m. That rain kind of staying to the south on the European model here. High pressure looks to win in terms of keeping it fairly dry here. But let's show you some of the rainfall totals. Even fairly dry is still one to two inches for a good portion of our area. European model yesterday was showing up to seven inches of rain in Cape May. Of course, these are just computer models. This isn't verbatim. That's where the meteorologists come in to determine how much rain we are going to see. But I just want to show you a few examples here. The GFS model, about the same here, showing more of between three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half of rain. That's good for us. We need the rain, and that's a good soaking without getting into too many flooding issues, at least rainfall flooding issues. So, hey, if that's what we get, we will certainly take that, especially with the drought we had. But the biggest concern could be the coastal flooding here along the shore. If we don't get that six or seven inches of rain along the coast, we are talking about days of tidal flooding, likely during the um, PM high tides as we go from Saturday all the way until Tuesday. Apologize for that mistake over there on Saturday. But the point is, as we go into Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the easterly winds are going to get us into minor to moderate flood stage. Moderate flood stage, I think, is just only going to be Monday in Cape May and Atlantic County. We are catching a break because we are going into the quarter moon by that period, which is bringing lower than usual tides here. If it was a full moon or a new moon, we'd be talking about more moderate stage coastal flooding. So here's a look at what moderate stage coastal flooding looks like in the wild woods. This is what I think you will see at its peak on Monday afternoon. And we are talking about pretty much everywhere along into the northwest of Park Boulevard, seeing water there. We'll take you now to Seaside Park and Midway Beach. This is minor flood stage, pretty much along Bayview Avenue. You know, sometimes that water gets over that seawall that's over there. So we're talking about Minor flooding, nuisance flooding, but nothing widespread for there. Looking at our wave heights and uh, periods here, you know, staying on the lower side, you want to be below 10 seconds. You want your wave heights to generally stay three feet or lower, so you have a low risk for rip currents. Generally going to be there as we go forward into the weekend here. At times, it will be higher, but all in all, I don't anticipate much in the way of issues with the surf, at least through Monday here. Could be a different story as we go into Tuesday as the storm pulls away, but at least for Saturday, Sunday and Monday, we are looking okay. We will have another update for you on Ian as we go later into the week. This is your Wednesday update on Ian. We will have more detailed forecasts for us coming up tonight at pressofac.com slash weather, or you can follow me on social media. I'll be posting a little bit about Ian 